If you're like me, you're obsessed with reptiles, and that obsession might have started with extinct reptiles like dinosaurs. So today, let's go over the five coolest, most interesting, most unique extinct reptiles. I'm going to put you there, and if you poop on me, you'll become extinct too. I I'm kidding, but stick around. Five, the ground burrowing boa. No. Now this seems like a very normal type of species that you could probably pick up in a pet store. If I hear this name, I'm thinking, okay, which island does this come from? Well, it doesn't come from any island anymore because it went extinct 1975-ish. That's when the last sighting was, but they did come from an island group or group of islands called Mauritius, uh, spelled like this. This was uh, a very interesting species because although they're a boa and you consider them to be, you know, like a larger individual who probably eats mammals or birds, they're actually described as lizard eaters and they came from a very small area. We're talking 1.5 square kilometers is where you find these boas. And Round Island burrowing boas didn't get that big. But in general, the most common length that you're gonna see is somewhere around one meter. Like we're talking three to four feet. Sometimes you'll see a little bit longer up to five feet. But this was a smaller, a smaller, a smaller type of boa species that was around until about 1975, although there were sightings on Round Island, which is where they get their name, which is just off of the coast of Mauritius until 1996. And this unique boa species went extinct, not because of humans, because of rabbits and goats. No, seriously, they they lived in these uh, type of areas where it was brushy and uh, they really kept, they were burrowing basically is what they were. So once rabbits and goats started to erode the soil and the vegetation where they lived in that very small area, they went extinct due to habitat loss because of Bugs Bunny and Gilbert the goat. I don't know. Number four, Sarcachusis. I am definitely probably pronouncing that wrong, but this is what they are. This is probably the oldest species on the list. And we're not going to talk about dinosaurs, by the way. So sorry, no T-Rex on this list. Uh, but we're going to talk about things that may have lived with dinosaurs, but are more closely related to living species like alligators, crocodiles, snake species that we have, obviously, turtles, stuff like that. Uh, this was an alligator type thing, crocodile. It was a crocodilian is what it was. So it was more closely related uh, to crocodilians than it was to dinosaurs. Uh, but of course, more closely related to things like birds than lizards. So very interesting. I think that all of these giant prehistoric type of looks like an alligator type of thing are very interesting. And this was one of the biggest. Estimates for total body size really do vary, but the biggest skull that was ever found intact was 5.25, so five and a quarter feet long. So to give you an idea, that's just a little bit smaller than I am. That'd be like me stretched out, and that's basically the size of its skull. That is insane to me. When you really put that in perspective, if you look at an American alligator head like this, and the length of it, and just like think about how big those things are and think about how those things if they wanted to do you in Game over. Sorry. You're no longer living if one of these things wants to take care of you Especially a saltwater crocodile which don't get near to the eight tons that is estimated that one of these animals could be Eight tons. Think about that for one second. That's this many trucks. That is this Many school. I could do lots of comparisons. Eight tons is a giant freaking animal but because 112 million years ago is estimated when they were walking around or probably swimming around, they were found uh, close to areas where they thought there would be water. And being that most crocodilians do spend lots of time in the water, uh, makes a lot of sense. We don't really know too much more about them. I imagine they would eat just kind of like whatever they want. On to number three, saddlebacked giant Rodriguez tortoises. Very cool species. Now. If you're a guessing, do they come from the island of Rodriguez? You would be right, which is also close to a Mauritius, which is where the boas were from. And the very first, number one, uh, number five on this list, I should say, these guys were big, they were giant, but because there was such a giant range of what people said they might be, I'll just leave it. They were very tall, they were uh, gentle, they were not afraid of humans, that's the way they were described by early settlers of Mauritius in the early 1700s. 
Uh, so they wouldn't, they just kind of walk around in these big herds, browsing about, eating the vegetation, not super concerned with what you're doing as a human. And to me, that's really cool because that kind of like reminds me of Jurassic Park where, you know, you come into this island, nothing has seen you ever before. Uh, so they're not afraid of you, which I imagine happened a lot with early settlers and these kind of offshoots, these islands and archipelagos where the natural inhabitants, like these giant tortoises, would just kind of look and like, all right, what... I don't have any reason to be afraid of that thing. But they found a reason to be afraid pretty darn quick. These things were first described at the beginning of the 1700s, and by the end of the 1700s, sometime between 1795 and 1802, that's it. No more. They were gone. Due to humans. Because we suck. And as one would do back in the day to get from place to place, there were no planes in the 1700s, so you'd take these wooden sailboats, basically, is what they were, these ships, and you needed to eat on these long journeys to and fro wherever you're going and like a lot of other places around the world at that time tortoises are really great for that because they last a long time without food and water you can kind of stack them on their backs up high in a ship you know in the bottom part there and and that's it you just kind of take one out you fry it up or cook it or whatever you do with the tortoise i've never eaten one myself and that's it but you've got an entire meal uh, for tons of people with just one tortoise so you just stack a bunch up and then you're good to go for your voyage and that's what happened but because they had particularly soft shells a lot of them would die during transport and they were not used as food as much as they were for things like fat and oil and the culling of these things took less than a hundred years even with efforts to conserve this species didn't work they, they all died they're extinct now before we get to two and one, if you like this channel, this video, if this is entertaining or educational to you at all, bam, smash subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Number two, horn turtles. So these were around not super long ago. They were described as dying out or being around 2,800 years ago. So there's no firsthand accounts that you can see people writing about like there was in the third entry here with the, uh, the giant tortoises. But they are, you know, well, they're intact. They're pretty much intact, a lot of the skeletal remains of these guys. And there were two type of species that were around the same time and around the same area. So places like Vanuatu uh, in Australia, New Caledonia, which is kind of a pretty big area, but that's where you're gonna find them. And depending on the locale or subspecies, uh, there's argument what you're gonna call them with the specific uh, species of turtle or several species, some people will say. They could be as small as 2.3 feet all the way up to 6.6 .6 feet, which is a, a giant freaking turtle. Why are they qu called horn turtles? Well, they had horns all about their head, which is really interesting. So it, it, the way that they were described when I was reading it before I saw pictures of what the skeletons look like, I thought of like Malaysian horn frogs, but like a turtle version. That's what it, I thought of. And that's kind of what they look like. These things or the skeletal remains look somewhere between like a dinosaur and a Pokemon. <laughs> like They look so kind of different and unique and mean and menacing. That's what it reminds me of like a war turtle to me. I don't know. Am I a nerd for saying that? Probably, but that's okay. Their tails also very dinosaur-esque in that they were like have ringed armor, like rings of armor, and they have offshoots of spikes as well. So it's unknown if this was going to be used for things like protection, although I would imagine probably if you've got spikes on your tail and it's a long enough tail to swing around, well, you're probably knocking heads with it. But I mean, that's just, I, I wasn't there. And in the research of this video, I couldn't find, I couldn't nail down one reason why they went extinct. Uh, there's some theories that it could have been something like a hurricane, which seems kind of silly because there was such a giant range where they were found. Uh, some people said that it was just loss of habitat or some articles said it was humans, but uh, I don't know. They're, they're gone. They're, they're gone. And number one, Titanoboa. No way. I didn't see that coming. I know, but you have to do it, right? If you do a video about extinct reptiles, the granddaddy of them all, the most exciting one, Titanoboa. Now, it's exciting because it's a giant boa species that seems to be like it might have been closely related to boa constrictors or anacondas uh, and that's why you see when they're drawn out right like we don't know what they look like this is 58 60 million years ago that they were described to be uh, living around that time so we don't know what their skin looked like a lot of people will draw them out to look more like an anaconda which makes sense because that is the giant or the biggest uh, boa species that we have around living now but Titanoboa would dwarf these things. This was like comparing uh, Shaq 
to Muggsy Bogues. Estimates say that these guys could have been like 42 feet, something like that. Of course, mostly, probably smaller, right? Around 26, 30 feet is what they said the average is, but up to 42 feet or larger, which means that, like that's a huge freaking snake man that's 250 vertebrae the one that they found intact they found 250 vertebrae that is a long snake and these are described as being over a ton 1.25 tons that's 2500 pounds of snake that is a giant beast no wonder these things are so talked about and really so interesting i've never had a conversation with someone about a titanoboa and their face wasn't kind of like this the entire time the skeletal remains which of course is what you're going to find these things don't exist anymore are found in areas of colombia and around that area they weren't even described until 2009 so we're talking like 11 years ago and then we found up around 30 specimens or not fully complete intact but 30 specimens 30 individuals uh in the time between then and now so it's pretty amazing that they weren't even described until 11 years ago now we've got 30 or partial intact specimens that's very interesting to me and just to think about this like think about how long 40 feet is of snake so what, what does this thing eat? Where does it live? I imagine it would probably live in the water. And by I imagine, I mean, that's what I've read doing the research for this video. And of course, what did it eat? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. Neither were you. And no one knows for sure. But I imagine that a 40 foot snake that weighed over a ton probably ate whatever the heck it wanted. That That's my guess. So there you go. The five coolest, most crazy, unique, extinct species of reptiles. What did you think? What did I forget? I know I forgot tons. There's really a lot of cool ones. Throw in the comment section below. And I did this video because I asked last week, what do you want to see on Thursday? And one of you pointed this out. So put in the comment section below what you want to see next week. I'm going to pick one of the ideas down there. If you haven't already, pop that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday. Nope, Monday.